Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Really glad you're all here together with us today. And um, it's a good day to worship God. It's a beautiful day out there. A day God has made. The beauty of creation is all around us as we're getting whispers of spring starting to come up through the ground. Amen. Uh, we saw some daffodils in our backyard. And uh, that looks beautiful. It also means Gary's going to have to start working in that garden. <coughs> <laughs> but um, it's good to have you all with us. It's good to have you that are joining us uh, online. Uh, let's all worship as, as uh, brothers and sisters here together, you, you there in your house uh, and here in this, in this house on location. As you came in, I hope you've seen that there's a connect card in your bulletin and we'd encourage you, all of you, to fill this out. Um, there's places there. Now, if you've, you're a regular attender, you can just put your name and, and check that you're a regular attender. Uh, there's a place there where you can respond to how the worship service went uh, from your experience. How did we do? We'd like to hear from you on that. And also a place where you can write down prayers and praises that, you, that are concerns for you. Those won't... Um, we'll see those later in the week. We will not be obviously able to... to share those in the public prayer time. If you want to share a prayer request that we, we lift up to God together in the public prayer time a little later in the service, there's another form in, your, in the pew in front of you. We'd encourage you to share that with us. But now, um, oh, one more announcement. Um, let, next week, this is a place of fellowship. This is a place, hopefully, that we get to know one another and form relationships. Next week, after the service, we have a coffee hour. We'd love for you to plan to join us and there's a, a bulletin, uh, there's a, pardon? Thank you. There's a sign-up sheet going around that uh, those of you, you know what that is, if you can uh, write down what you can uh, bring to help us um, uh, put on a nice coffee hour for each other. This right here and all our lives in Jesus Christ because of, because of what he has done is amazing grace. If we don't see it, if we're not feeling it right now, hopefully the Holy Spirit will m open it up to us again. This life in which we live is amazing grace. Let's worship. Let's stand and sing if we can. Oh. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who saves the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in all and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who breaks the chaos back into order? Who makes the orphans a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nation with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life 
that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Lord, we, uh, you have revealed to us, those of us who know you as our personal Savior and Lord, that uh, without you, we have sunk very deep, O oh God, that there is nothing worthy in us, O oh Lord, that we are needy, broken, crying out, we're children who are broken, O oh God, and you, out of your amazing love and, and condescension and love and power and grace, you came down and lifted us all up. You lifted us out of the place where we were. Lord, not, not because of anything we did, O oh Lord, but because of who you are, Lord, you came to us. So we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that when we were sinking deep, you were there. You are there. You are there, O oh God. You are our Lord. We want to lift up our hearts to you and, and thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Standing here in your presence In a grace so relentless I am one by perfect love Wrapped within the arms of heaven In a peace that lasts forever Sinking deep in mercy seas I'm wide awake, drawing close, stirred by grace, and oh, my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love. Pursue me, you lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all, so beautiful. Here in you I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face, my secret place, and I'm wide awake. 
Falling closer by grace and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love. Your love so deep is washing over me, your face is all I seek, you are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire, Lord, hear my only cry to know you all my life. Your love so deep is washing over me, your face is all I see, you are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire, Lord, hear my only cry, to know you all my life. I'm wide awake, drawing closer by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love, oh, your love. Amen. You may be seated. Are there some kids that will come and talk to me for a couple minutes? After the bells, yeah. How are you guys today? Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Did you help her come down here? Nice. Okay. So um, this morning, I'm. It's okay. It's okay. She's good. Um, this morning, I would like us to think about. I would like you guys to try to remember when you got a really, really wonderful present. Maybe it was. Maybe it was this last Christmas. Did you get anything? Anything you really liked? What did you like, Karen? I liked uh, the shirt that my little brother's school gave me. Okay, your little brother's school gave you a shirt. What color was the shirt? Blue. Blue? Really liked it? Do you, do you wear it a lot? Okay. Did you get a present you really liked? Yeah. What was it? A gift card. A gift card to what? My auntie gave it to What's me. What's that? Uh, my auntie gave me a gift, for, a gift card for Christmas. Okay. And you could buy stuff with it, right? Do you, rem do you remember a gift you got? Something? Yeah, Riley? I really wanted a mermaid tail bathing suit, and my dad finally got me one. Finally. Uh, a mermaid, uh, what was mermaid? Mermaid tail bathing suit. A mermaid tail bathing suit. Well, you felt really good when you got that gift, right? You got one? Do you remember one? Um, I did, I, I got the... A race car. A race car. We love it when someone gives us a really wonderful... Yeah, oh, is that it? Is that one of them? So we love it when someone gives us a really wonderful gift, like this race car, like your shirt, like the mermaid bathing suit. Um, 
mermaid tail bathing suit. I want to tell you about a gift. You may have a little bit of an idea about this already, but one day you will, I'm praying and trusting that you will get this amazing gift. It is, it is a, it's a free gift and it kind of catches you by surprise. It's kind of a gift that sometimes you, you think you've heard about it all, your whole life. And you think, oh, I know that. But then when it happens to you, whoa! It's like opening up the Christmas present or the birthday present. Like, I had no idea. This is for me. You know what free gift I'm talking about? Jesus. Jesus, but even more than even Jesus, it's what Jesus did for us. One day you'll realize, yeah, one day you'll realize that me too, I am alone without God. And without God, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm broken, I'm hurting, I'm not always acting right, I, I can't do it by myself. And one day, you're going to realize that Jesus died to save you from that, to rescue you, to make you his very own. To make you a person who really belongs to him closely, his close personal friend. And you will realize, you will realize this is something people can tell you about it, but when it happens to you, then you know, wow, Jesus, you gave yourself to me, to me, to me, Riley, to me, Karen, to me, when you died on the cross. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave yourself to me, Gary when you died on the cross to rescue me from being alone without you forever and ever. You rescued me, Lord Jesus, with all that pain. You rescued me so that I might have a relationship with you forever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, for the greatest present of all. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you for talking to me. We're going to listen to the bells, and then after that you can go to Sunday school, okay? The bells are about what I was talking about, about a redeemer. See ya. There is a Redeemer. That's what they were 
lifting up that beautiful music to God about there's a Redeemer who bought us back from aloneness, from brokenness with his precious blood. Let's come to that Redeemer with our prayers. Am I in your way? With our prayers, with our offerings, with our praises. If Do you have any prayer requests that we can lift up together? Thank you, Gene. Let's bow our heads and, and uh, open ourselves to God's presence. God is already here, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, let us uh, cooperate with God opening us to him. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that there is a Redeemer. Thank you, O Lord, that even though we were captives, prisoners in a foreign land under the under the sway, under the captivity, under the total influence, O oh God, of, of someone who does not have our well-being at heart, of the evil one, of the Satan. Even though we were there, O oh Lord, you did not leave us there and you did not wait until we could just try to climb our way out. But, but you, O oh Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you, O oh loving warrior, you broke through the strongholds that kept us prisoner, kept us dead in our sins and trespasses. You, Lord Jesus, you broke through and you redeemed us. You bought us back. You bought us back. You brought us back, O oh God, to yourself. Thank you, O oh Lord, for every feeling, every thought, every acknowledgement spiritually in people's hearts this morning as they respond to that truth and they recognize, yes, that's me. I've been re redeemed. I've been bought, brought back. I've been re rescued from stuff. I've been rescued from myself. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you revealed that to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you revealed that to us. Thank you for every time you wake us up, O oh God, to who we really are, the redeemed ones, the ones who have been bought back, bought back from where we were, bought back from where we would be if you hadn't bought us back. O oh God, we thank you. We thank you, holy, majestic, holy, holy God. Your ways are so much higher than our ways. And your love is so much higher than our love that you decided to become one of us and to die for our sins on that terrible and glorious day of such suffering, Jesus, when you redeemed us. Thank you that there is a Redeemer and that we're not left alone in our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And as we come before you, O oh God, this morning, in gratitude and in worship, we also see how we have sometimes acted as if you weren't there. We, some, we also see how we can just forget you and just act as if we're our own gods and our own decision makers. Help us now, O Lord, as we come before you in honesty about things we have done against what you want and ways we have not done what you want but just decided not to. Be with us now, O God, as we confess before you. If you will join me in this prayer, we prayed it last week. Let's pray this prayer of confession again together this week. It's in your bulletins. Almighty God, we agree with you and we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. We have not loved you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as we love ourselves. Deepen within us our sorrow for the wrong we have done and for the good we have left undone. Lord, you are full of compassion and gracious, slow to anger, and flowing over with mercy. 
there is always forgiveness with you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Reset and heal that which is broken. Give light to our minds, strength to our wills, and rest to our souls. Speak to each of us and let your word remain in us until it has produced in us your holy will. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us be real with God about specific sins. Don't just confess generally and vaguely and abstractly, but allow the Holy Spirit to call to your mind that which you have done against God, that which you have just decided not to do when God was asking you to do it. Confess specific sins to the Lord this morning. I'm sorry, God. We're sorry, God. We're sorry for what we have done, for what we've left undone. And we thank you, God, that Jesus died on the cross and the blood that, that came from him as he was killed on that day, the blood cleanses us from our sin as we come to him in faith and ask him to forgive us our sins. We thank you, Jesus, that you're the redeemer. You're the forgiver. You're the great lover of our souls. Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We lift our hearts to you to, to in request. We pray for our families. We pray, O oh Lord, for all those in our families who do not know you. We pray for all of those in our families and friends who seem to know you, but seem to ignore you, seem to ignore life and fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ who seem to, to think that they can just automatically grow in Christ all alone. We pray, O oh Lord, we lift up people, Lord, that we lift up our, our church, everyone, O oh Lord, that we might deeply grow in Christ, that we, that we might allow your Holy Spirit to transform us, to live in relationship and community and mutual forgiveness and mutual telling each other the truth in love. Oh, Lord, we ask, oh God, that your spirit will come and continue to work with us as needy and as broken we are as a people. Lord, we ask for your grace to continue to transform us. You are the artist and we are the, the lumps of clay. You're the one that makes the pottery. And Lord, we pray. Help us, O oh Lord, to be shaped and reshaped by your Holy Spirit, God. We ask for our families. We ask for our neighbors. We ask for those people we have kind of glancing relationships with in the, in the community, O oh God. We pray that you will work through us to speak to them. Work through our words when we have a chance to actually open up carefully and lovingly your gospel to them, O oh God. Be with us, Lord. And, O oh Lord, we pray for our communities, for, for people that are victims of crime and addiction. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are victims of doing it themselves, the criminals, we Lord. We pray for them in the, the desperation of their being victimized by their own actions. O oh Lord, we pray that you will rescue them from that deep darkness, O oh God, all across our country and all across the world. We pray that you will rescue the perpetrators of violence and oppression and cruelty all over the world. Rescue them themselves, O oh God, from the great sins they are committing, whether they are at the tops of governments, whether they are at the, in places of leadership and responsibility, wherever they are, O oh God, convict them and bring them to their knees, O oh Lord. Help them cry out in desperation, realizing they need a savior. We pray for all those who have been victims of their crimes. We pray for those, O oh Lord, that have been trodden down, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will lift them up and that they will know your grace and your healing. O oh Lord, we pray 
for all those places that are struggling, God. We pray, pray for us, the places in our hearts where we are struggling, O oh God, to come to you truly in, in spirit and in truth. So we thank you for this great privilege of being with you in prayer. We lift up specifically Kim Dennison and their family as they face legal challenges regarding to their grandson. Lord, in your mercy, hear. We pray, O oh Lord, for Jeremy's grandson, grandmother, who's sick in the hospital in Cameroon, Julia. We pray, O oh Lord, for her and, and for all her church family and the church family here. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh Lord, for healing for Jeff Raffle. He's in rehab for uh, back surgery. This is Roberta's brother. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Patricia Biggers, who is in hospice care. We pray for her alongside Janet, her friend. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up our sister, uh, Marie Wilson's sister, Sherry Glenn, who might be a candidate for a cornea transplant. We pray, O oh God, that you will smooth the way for this to happen and that she might not lose her eyesight. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up, O oh God, uh, our gratitude and thanks for, you, for your love for us, offering your Son, so that we may actually be able to come into your presence. Praise God, Lord, in your mercy. Along with Joanne, we want to thank you, O oh God, for her sister who visited her here, for Ms. Helen and the granddaughter, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, with Joanne, we pray for her grandson, who is so struggling. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will change his heart and bring him to yourself. Lord, in your mercy. We also lift up, O oh God, along with Robert Allen, Betty Sue Dove. She's in the hospital recovering from uh, an infection in her left arm. Lord, in your mercy. With Marion, O oh God, we pray for her Uncle Stu, that radiation will shrink the tumor and stop the tumor from bleeding. With Marion, we lift our hearts to you, O oh God, Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Joyce Clark's great-grandson, who was born this last Friday. We thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh God, for this new life. And we also lift up Lynn Malmstrom, who's home and improving. We pray, O oh Lord, for your power and her life as she heals. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, Father, for all these people and friends and for the good things that are happening. We pray for your power and your love as you continue their healing. We lift our hearts to you, Father, as Jesus taught us to, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to remember that uh, our worship service is a service of, we hope, action. And the action is offering ourselves to God. We're here to do things. We're here to pray. We're here to hear actively Scripture, hear the teaching of Scripture. We're here to pray prayers of offering ourselves to God. Be thinking about what God's asking you to do this week, this afternoon. So let's worship God by offering things to God, even as they did in the Old Testament. But we're offering our lives to God. Amen? And along with your offering your life to God, the part that's very, very dear to you all and dear to us, dear to us all, is our, our what? Our money. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. All yeah, nobody wants to talk about their money. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also, Jesus said. So remember your money offering to the Lord. Uh, we have a, a box at the back of the congregation. We'll also have a a uh, plate up here for the choir when they leave. At the end of the service, you'll hand in your money offering 
And um, if you're just a first-time visitor with here, us here today, we'd ask you not to give anything. We, we just uh, don't feel obligated at all to do that. But uh, remember, those of you who are part of the uh, family already, to give your money offering. Let us stand, and as is traditional when we think about our offering, we want to thank God for his great offering to us. Let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. Please remain standing and let us sing about this amazing love of Jesus that he would come and die for us on the cross. The hymn writer here is astonished. What, run, what, love, what kind of love is this? What wondrous love is this? Let's recover our astonishment. Hymn number 215.
first scripture reading this morning is taken from Paul's letter to his friend Titus. Um, it can be found on page 215 of our Pew Bibles. If you're here this morning and you're not familiar with our blue Pew Bibles, um, I want to point out that for reasons I've never figured, the publisher decided to number the Old Testament and stop and start over again with the New Testament. So we're on page 215 of the New Testament part of our, of our Pew Bibles. Again, from Titus 3, verses 1 through 11. Remind them to be subject of submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for any honest work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all men. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by men and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit, which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The saying is sure. I desire you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to apply themselves to good deeds. These are excellent and profitable to men. But avoid stupid controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels over the law, for they are unprofitable and futile. As for a man who is, is factious, after admonishing him once or twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is perverted and sinful. He is self-condemned. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
I'm hoping I can uh, share a little bit of the beauty of the Savior, too, this morning. <clears throat> if we're not getting it, we're not getting it right. We always need to rediscover and go deeper into our awareness of the beauty of our Savior. Before I share some thoughts from the Scripture, I just want to uh, remind you about your um, Connect card. We'd like for every one of you to fill out a Connect card and uh, put it in the box at the back. Um, there will be a place to note down if God has done something um, or spoken to you about something as we look at the Scripture together. There's obviously prayers and praises. We can share those with uh, prayer groups that are praying. We'll pray, pray for you this week. Um, and we would be interested in, in how you experience the service. So, so please remember to put the Connect card in the box at the back as you share your money offering. Um, a few of us, some of you have heard and you knew we were going there. Actually, it was more than a few, given the size of our church. It was 16 of us went to the uh, Dream Church Conference. And um, um, I, at some of these things, I go um, feeling like, is this going to be a disappointment, or am I just going to be overwhelmed, or are they just going to make me feel awful about our church, or whatever? But it wasn't like that at all. Uh, it, 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 it was really wonderful. It far exceeded my expectations, and, and I can have very high expectations. Um, Laurel, my wife, captured um, one thing that it meant for her that really stood out for her, and I think that's a really good way to think about it. Um, a dream church isn't necessarily a church that's a lot bigger. It's not even necessarily a church that's growing really rapidly. But it is a, with well, those of you who went, it is a, fill in the blank, a, a loving church, a healthy church. A healthy church. What does that mean? A healthy church is a church that does the two, the great commandment and the great commission. The great commandment, love the Lord with all of you and love your neighbor as yourself. So a healthy church is a loving church. And a healthy church is where people meet Jesus for the first time. And they not only meet Jesus for the first time, but they also grow in Christ-likeness. They grow in Jesus Christ. They grow to be more like Jesus. So a healthy church is where we're seeing numbers grow because new people are coming to Christ through our ministry, through our love. And also... We're seeing people not just stay in the same place they stay, they've been for decades, but their lives are changing. They're being delivered from stuff. That's a healthy church. Amen? And uh, we've got some aspects of a healthy church, but maybe we have some stretches in our church body where we're not very healthy, but we want to grow healthy. Amen? So I'm very excited about this uh, leadership from this uh, uh, Oak Ridge Baptist Church and the teaching and how they're willing to take us under our wing, their wing and just help us move forward. So pray for that. It was very exciting. Um, there was lot, there's lots to share and ask people who went, okay, uh, and, and ask me. It's God is calling us to be one of his dream churches, I believe. Let us look at our second scripture today. It is Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. I don't have the page number that's in your pew Bibles. Can someone share that with me? Oh, it's, it's, in, the, it's in the bulletin, Gary. Come on now. 192, and the, and the pagination at the end of your book, as Dick was mentioning, 192. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, 
so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he, ha for we, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be your way of life, to be our way of life. The word of God for the people of God. Um, when I was a teenager, I was at Rift Valley Academy in, at, in Kijabe, Kenya, a missionary kid going to boarding school uh, a few hundred miles away from where my parents were missionaries in Burundi, Africa. And uh, I, I would usually make the first team soccer and uh, but I didn't make first team so uh, rugby, and I didn't make first team, first team basketball. I remember, in particularly, the day I was trying out for first team basketball. I, I really admired and liked that coach, and I really wanted to be on that team. Um, and uh, so I was trying, and, and then there was a time when, you know, they're, they're cutting different players, and he took me aside, and, uh, and, and he shared with me, you know, uh, why I wasn't going to be on the team, and where, you know, what, things I still needed to work on, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so I was cut by, from, the, from the first team basketball. And uh, my performance uh, in basketball, my abilities, uh, well, whatever, wherever I had, where I'd gotten to at that point, just didn't, didn't make the grade for the first team in basketball at Rift Valley Academy. We all are intensely aware of where our performances fall short. We're all very aware of performance. We all draw, in fact, we're not only aware of where our performance falls short, but we are all people, every one of us, who draw lines, performance lines. What do I mean by that? We draw performance lines that put ourselves on the top side in those who have come up to a certain place, and we think of others that have not gotten up to that certain place as on the other side of that performance line. We are all, in that way, sort of miniature judges, I guess you could say, miniature coaches who cut certain people from the team in our hearts and minds. We all draw these performance lines. We can't help it. This is who we, this is deeply in us. We draw performance lines, and it's not just us that does. I didn't mention this on the outline, but of course God does too. God draws performance lines. God is holy. God's love is perfect. God's presence for people. God's, God's reaching out to people. He's per God's perfect in what he does. So God's holy and we're not. You think of the Ten Commandments and, 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 the, and, the, and the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's a command. There's a line drawn there. We know we don't measure up to that line of, of loving God with all of us all the time. Love your neighbor as much as and in the same way that you love yourself. There's a performance line. Do you love your neighbors like that? We're conscious that we fall short of the performance line from God. This passage that I just read said, we are dead. We're dead in our sins. We're dead in our failed performances. We're dead in that arena in which we fall so far short of the glory of God. There's something about that that kills us. There's a place in the scriptures where it says, the wages, the payback, the results, the consequences of sin is what? It's death. It could be immediate death. It could be a slow dying process, killing joy, killing life. The things that seem enjoyable out there in the world of sin, actually, if you're fully in that, they kill. They kill joy. You don't see that in the TV shows and the ads and stuff. It looks like it's just full of life and having a great time. But really, the wages of sin... They kill. It kills. It destroys life and joy. Life 
at the most enjoyable, at the most full, that's most vital, is life lived in harmony with what God wants you, how God wants you to live. Amen? But we, it's not only God who draws a performance line. We all draw performance lines. And because we're not God, ours are kind of shaky. Ours are kind of filled with ourselves. Ours are kind of often mixed with some truth and some, some not truth. We all, we draw our performance lines and we're on this side of the up, uphill from those who don't measure up to the performance line we're drawing. A classic case of this, of course, is the tough father who's impossible to please. A person lives their whole life, it's usually the father, could be the mother, lives their whole life trying to please that person and they're conscious all their lives long that they can't. They're never good enough, they get feedback. The, the parent has this powerful performance line and they're never up to it, the child and the child, even though they grow to be an adult, they're aware of it their whole lives. There's lots of performance lines. Some people have a performance line and, they, and, and in this performance line, if you honor traditional family values, you're on this side of the performance line with them. If you're a person who scorns and has contempt for traditional family values, you're on the other side of the performance line. There's others who um, have a different performance line. They say, if you're working for an all-inclusive society, you're on our side of the performance line. Those of you who are not working for an all-inclusive society, you're on the other side of the, our performance line. There's religious performance lines. Those who have the truth and live it like we do, we're on this side of the performance line. Those of you who do not have the truth and don't live it, you're on that side down there of the performance line. The pluralist, in contrast to that person, has a different performance line. The, the, the pluralist says, below the performance line are the religious people who think they have the whole truth, but, apart, but above the performance line is, is us, are we pluralists, who we know that they don't have the whole truth, and we know that no religion has the whole truth. Do you see there's these ways that mess with each other? Everybody has their performance lines. We're on this side, you all are on that side. It's a pity that you're not more like us. We all do this. We do this on the, on the very small level and on the great philosophical level, on the political level. The new atheists, most famous of whom is Daniel Dennett, the, his performance line is the enlightened atheists, and he calls them the brights. <laughs> the brights. The enlightened atheists are on this side of the performance line, and on the other side of the performance line below are the uneducated and ignorant religious people. And all those uneducated and ignorant religious people are the source of so much violence. If, ever, if only they would come to Daniel Dennett's side with the brights and the enlightened atheists, they would be on the high side of that performance line. There's a performance line of the skeptic. By the way, I'm getting this from Timothy Keller's, one of the chapters in Timothy Keller's book, The Reason for God. The, the skeptic has a, a performance line, and on, on the skeptic's high side of the performance line is everybody that's honestly skeptical. And we can't really know truth. We've got to doubt everything, etc., etc. And, and on the low side, below the performance line, is everybody who has a dogmatic belief, whether it's a secular dogmatic belief or a religious dogmatic belief, everybody who holds to some, some belief strongly and tries to impose it on others, that's the low side of the performance line. We all have... Oh, here's, here's an interesting one. The person who believes in complete tolerance, they have a performance line. The... Uh, the, their performance line is, all of you who, 
who are bigots toward people and, and don't have tolerance toward others. You're below their performance line, okay? And uh, all of us who tolerate everybody, says the person who's for tolerance, we're above the, t the performance line. But of course, they're not tolerating the people who don't tolerate everybody, are they? <laughs> we all draw performance lines. We're deeply drawn into this game. This, this, it's in us. It's deep in us. And I'm not saying it's all sort of just false. Because there is a performance line, there is a holy God, and His performance line is holy and good and true. And I think His performance line goes across and disqualifies so much of all our performance li lines, whatever political party, whatever religious group, whatever, whatever denomination, whatever formation we had, He's the transcendent God. His performance, the, the, how he understands this is pure and good and true. And we are so faulty in how we do this. We're so faulty in how we do this. The ordinary performance lines of, I'm not good enough. I'll never measure up. I'll never be competent enough to do this job well. In all these lines, the ones drawing the lines always put themselves, usually put themselves up above the line and see a whole bunch of others below that line. These are very human lines mixed with some truth. We get fooled into thinking they are the same thing as God's line. But we're on the upper side of the line. We're okay. Others are not. We're okay with the judge. Others are not. We're justified. Others are not. In his death for us, and I got this wording wrong and I couldn't figure out how to do it better. <laughs> in, his just, in his death for us, it's not true that Jesus erases all lines. But Jesus does erase the power of the line to keep us down. In his death for us, Jesus crosses the lines. In his death for us, it doesn't matter where you are on anybody's performance line. The grace of Jesus on what he did on the cross reaches to you and me wherever we are. Amen? If we just stayed with the world's performance lines, either we excel and we can look at a certain way at other people, or we don't excel and we're looked at in a certain way by other people. But God is not like that. God and Jesus Christ went down across all the performance lines, even across his own. And he reached to us, it says, while we were still sinners, he loved us so much that he actually died for us. He loved us so much that he allowed himself to be tortured for hours so that any penalty for poor performance and disobeying the law was leveled on him, was taken out on his very body. Jesus does not leave you in the death of not measuring up on the wrong side of the performance line. But Jesus died in order to rescue you and me. Amen? We are so drawn to thinking in the shape of an N. I guess you could look at the top of this, uh, this organ, the pipes. And we, even though we know the gospel, we're so drawn to thinking, here we are on this side, and we need to go up there and get better and better. And then, up there, God will come down to us. If we can only do this and that, then God will come and meet us. If we only we can measure up to the performance line up there, then God will connect with us and love us. But it's actually as if that was turned upside down. It's like a U. God loves us so much. He knows how trapped we are in all our places of, of sin, of hypocrisy, of failure of inner awareness of who we really are, even as we point the finger at others. He knows how we're trapped in all of that. And He comes to us across the performance lines, and He meets us 
and loves us and rescues us as the Savior. And then if we meet Him, if we get it, if the Holy Spirit works the miracle in your life that you're born from above and you understand that it's all Jesus' mercy that I know Him as my personal Savior, if we get it, then the path back up, ethics, it's all life change out of gratitude. Amen? It's grace coming down and gratitude going up. It's grace that rescues you. It's gratitude that, that your effort to allow the Spirit to transform you. If you think, it's amazing how, I've only been a pastor for what now? Uh, well, maybe 20 years, I guess. Um, it's amazing how often I still encounter people who have been in church all their lives, and I ask them about their relationship with God, and the answer goes something like this. I've gone, in, I've gone to church all my life. My parents took me to church. I was in Sunday school. I've been, I've done some, I've, I've tried to be good to my neighbors. That's trying to perform. That's try, trying to say you're good enough. That's religion. That's trying to climb up there so maybe you're okay with God. Justifying yourself before God with your works, with your achievements, with your accomplishments. You can still, and you are, if that's all it is for you, you're still dead in your sins. No matter how pretty and good a life you may have led, you're still dead in your trespasses and sins. Your still life is still oriented primarily around yourself. And you are not living in the gratitude of, yes, I am wicked. Yes, I am deeply needy. Yes, I need the mercy of a Savior to do in me what I cannot do in myself. If you haven't had that experience, if you do not know that that's the heart of it all, then maybe no matter how wonderful a lot, maybe, maybe no matter how many beautifully good things you've done in other people's lives, you're still dead in your trespasses and sins. That's the gospel. That's the word of God. Only of those who have been stopped in their tracks by the realization of the depth of their own wickedness and realize all have fallen desperately short of the glory of God and all need the forgiveness and the rescue of a loving Savior coming down. Only if you've been there and you received His grace as, and received Him as your personal Savior and Lord, do you know what I'm talking about? Amen? There is a lie in so much of the performance line stuff. There's a lie that we tell ourselves. Even if we've heard the gospel all our lives, we get sucked back into that lie. And we think it's about how we measure up that will give God, us God's favor and God's grace. But we, have, we need to, if we're going to live in the truth and not in the lie, we need to have to realize that while we were still sinners, while we were lost in our trespasses and sins, Jesus rescued us. And in that state for our whole life long, where is the basis for looking down your nose at anybody? You live in the merciful grace of God. God had mercy on you. How can you erect again a position of altitude from which to look at the other? Religion is trying to get to God, trying to please God. Accepting a Savior is realizing and accepting that He has come down to us, to even me, even Gary. So the question is, will you and I, if we haven't yet, say yes to the Savior who died for you on the cross? Will you say yes and take his hand as he lifts you up, not really above the performance line, 
but lifts you up into relationship with Him. Lifts you up and across that which is separating you from Him. He's your only Savior. It's not what you can do that's good that saves you. He's your only hope. He's my only hope. He's our only hope. He's the only hope of the people, even all the wonderful people you know, outside this church's walls. You know people that are better people than you are. Jesus is still their only hope. Will you and I receive him? Will we receive him? Will we receive, in a sense, this insult to who we think we are and realize it's all his grace? Jubilee, Jubilee, Jesus is our Jubilee. Debts forgiven, slaves set free. Jesus is our jubilee to be so completely guilty taken over with despair to look into your judge's eyes and see a savior there jubilee jubilee Jesus is our jubilee. Debts forgiven, slaves set free. Jesus is our jubilee. If you bow your heads, there might be somebody here that, though you may have heard this all your life, maybe you're hearing it now for real for the first time. Do you want to say yes to his free gift? Do you want to accept his grace? His great gift he wants to give you? It cost him, the choir sang about a redeemer, it cost him his life to buy you back from the grips of sin's death. Do you want to finally say yes to him? If you do, please pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Pray it quietly to yourself. I know I can't make myself right with God. Lord Jesus, I believe you died to pay the penalty for my sin and to make me right with God. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died to save me. I accept you right now as my Savior, and I trust you with my life. Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you for this astonishing thing you did for us. We thank you, all of us in the room who actually know you as our personal Savior and Lord. We thank you that you have rescued us, not because of anything good about us, but about, but about the amazing good that's about you. The love that you have for us, we thank you. We pray, O oh Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that Anyone who may have prayed that prayer genuinely before you this morning, that you will give them the courage to, to mark that place on the Connect card, to be in connection with someone who could follow up with them, to humble themselves, to, to be ready to just take the journey, O oh God. Just pray that you'll be with them, O oh Lord. Be with us who know this and have lived this, but somehow, even after all, we can kind of forget it and think we're something we're not. Lord, bring us to our knees in prayer, repentance. Correct our minds, O oh God, and bring us back to you. Because our hope is built on not ourselves. 
It is built on nothing less than you, you and your righteousness. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's sing about that, that our hope is built on nothing less. If you have made a commitment, could you please mark that on your Connect card and drop it in the box at the back on your way out? Turn with me to page number 353. And um, if you believe this, sing it with joy and power. Amen? Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. <clears throat> Let's stand. Remember to drop your Connect card as you leave. And um, remember, we're going to be singing this song, Change My Heart, O God. Uh, you might be praying that prayer. Change it such that I meet you for the first time and accept your grace for the first time. You might be praying that prayer. Um, change my heart, O God, that I might live according to the calling of grace and not just the performance lines. Amen? Let's sing, Change My Heart, O oh God. <clears throat>
Go in the love and peace of the Savior, Jesus Christ.